Hi everyone, I'm Francine and welcome back to the Wardstream YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk through some of the major issues that we see in our clients Google Ads copy. Plus, we're going to tell you how you can avoid to make them and to make your campaigns as effective as possible. These are the five most common mistakes that we see in an account that you could be making. One, keyword stuffing. Two, not using ad extensions. Three, missing calls to action. Four, not testing new concepts. And five, not keeping your customers' goals in mind. Ready? Let's get started. With ad copywriting, we're given a number of open-ended text fields without much guidance from the search engines as to what to put there. Sure, there are some technical boundaries like punctuations and symbol usage, but for the most part, it's one of the areas in search accounts where advertisers are given the most leeway. So it's easy to see how sometimes we can come up with ads that flop. We're all for testing just about everything we can in general, but also in ad copy. The SERPs are only getting more crowded and more confusing. I haven't heard of anyone tell me that their number of competitors is going down. It's more important than ever that we try to find new things to test to see what can drive the results, and that means getting rid of some underperforming copy. The first issue that we're going to talk through is keyword stuffing. This is in the year 2000, and you are not doing SEO. If your ad copy looks like it, you can be in real trouble. While it's considered a best practice to include your keywords in your ad copy, there's everything in moderation rule still holds true here. Sure, it can be a struggle to figure out how to encompass everything you're offering in a small amount of characters. No business person has ever wished to have less space in ad copy, but unfortunately, we're given the same tiny amount. Don't give into temptation and simply stuff a bunch of keywords or short phrases into an ad and try to pass it off as ad copy. It's not. Searchers will look right over your ad to something that tells them something and proves them value for their offer. Would you click on this ad? Look at those repetitive phrases and buzzwords stuffed in it. I know I wouldn't click on that. The fix? Use actual phrases and sentences in your ad copy. Sure, you might not get all that you want into that variant, but that's why they let us use multiple ads per ad group. Run them against each other and see what works best. The next problematic ad copy practice, not leveraging ad extensions. As I've mentioned, there's only so much we can fit in our standard character limits, but that's why the platform gives us additional options to help expand our coverage. Site links, call it extensions, and structured snippets are a must test for all accounts. We'll talk through each one, but they're basically additional text that we control without any type of advanced integration. Let's talk site links. Writing the ad text for SiteLink is almost identical to writing for regular ad copy. Just don't make sure to repeat the ad. Here's what a SiteLink extension looks like. Remember, these will show up alongside your ad copy, so make the messaging in your SiteLink add value to what you have put in your ad copy. Next up, callout extensions. These can help us satisfy the keyword stuffer in all of us. The creation process allows us for short bursts of text that can assist in making ad copy more focused. I typically will test out a number of different approaches with callouts, like using product names, features, benefits, and more. Here's an example of what a callout extension would look like on the SERP. Lastly, structured snippets. Structured snippets are very similar to callout extensions, but they have a list type to choose from at the beginning, which will be followed by a list of values that you input. This can help convey what you're trying to showcase in the ad copy without sacrificing ad characters. Here you can see what the list looks like when you're creating your snippet. And here you can see an example of a snippet used in the wild. This is important, so I will say it again. Ad extensions need to be tested. Even though they help your ad take up more space, that doesn't mean your ads are going to perform better when those extensions are in place. Regularly review how your ad extensions are performing and don't let one bring down the performance of your campaign. Another problem we see regularly is missing calls to action in the ad. Why would anyone run advertising if they're not going to ask prospects to do something? You would be surprised by how common this issue is. The groundwork of a fantastic solution can be laid without a CTA, but then there's no next step for the potential customer to take and convert. A quick two-word phrase might not be the largest difference between someone being swayed by your ad copy or by clicking on your ad. 
But adding an end call to action has the largest impact on the landing page itself and your conversion rate. Adding a call to action to your ad tells the user what you want them to do next. Remember, they started their query because they were needing something, but each query has a different intent. When you're able to deliver high quality appealing ad copy that solves their problem alongside a CTA that matches their intent, they are way likelier to convert. Calls to action do not need to be rocket science, but there are plenty of effective ones that can be altered for nearly any business to boost conversion rates and make ads more effective. We've talked about the importance of testing ad extensions, but that's not the only thing you should test. Text ads come in more shapes and sizes than ever before, and their formats is always evolving. We first started with the expanded text ads a few years ago. Now they've been further extended to include a potential third headline and a second description. It's more important to continue testing new ad variants as they roll out on networks that you have been actively running campaigns. They might not always work for your business right away, or even for that matter, but it's been the case in the past that these new formats quickly become the only format. Looking at you expanded text ads. If you're not testing to figure out what works and what doesn't as new formats are released, you can miss out on better campaign performance and need to revamp all of your ads if one format is adopted as the new standard. Finally, you can't make mistakes of forgetting your customer's goals when writing your ad copy. If every ad was written for the advertiser's benefit, all of them would say the same thing with a different URL. That is not what your customers want, and that's not how you want to serve your potential customers. Focus on how the solution you're offering helps to solve a problem they're currently experiencing. Pay attention to search queries and be sure you're delivering on what they're searching for. Try to be as specific as they are, but without making assumptions, just in case you're wrong. In this example, the ads generally fit my search, but the bottom ad made doesn't specifically mention shoes, just running gear. So immediately they're out. Not because they might not have what I want somewhere on their site, but because there are so many other options for me to choose from that don't require me to go find what I want myself. They're handed to me right here on the SERP. All right, there you have it. These are the top five issues we see in ad copy that could be having a direct impact on the effectiveness of your Google campaigns. Writing ad copy is likely the most balanced blend of art and science you'll come across in PPC campaign management. You want to write creative, compelling copy, but you need to make sure you can test its effectiveness. So start drafting and testing and be sure to avoid these mistakes above. See you next time. Oh, 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 oh.